Welcome. This is Cooking in the Shop with Mark. I'm opening a can of tomatoes from my favorite store, HEB, to put in some shop-made gumbo. This isn't going to be a video about making the gumbo. It's going to be a video about making the mug that I eat the gumbo out of. Here I've got a piece of tin that came off an old popcorn tin. The nice thing about tin things is you can cut them up, make pieces and solder them together. This is gonna be the handle for the mug. You gotta be really careful when you're cutting this because it's like cutting a razor blade. Trust me, I've got a lot of wounds from it. I probably should have cleaned my bench up before I started the video, but you know what? If I move that stuff, I never find it in the mess that's on the rest of my bench. You know, the nice thing about tin and doing this without a pattern is you can cut it out any shape you want to. I usually make the handles a little bit wider at the top than at the bottom, just because there's a wider piece to rest the side of your index finger on when you're using the mug. But this time, the way it turns out, it's gonna be about the same width from top to bottom. You gotta make sure you get the end squared off before you use the vise with a square, I use that steel square and tap it down and get it a good 90 and get a sharp edge on it. Not so sharp that it catch it, but just, just a nice bend on the edge. And after you do that, just take it out and be easy about bending it over 90 so you can start flattening it out. If you don't get it bent good before you start to flatten it out, it changes the width of the fold and it just doesn't look very good. It's, it's usable, but it just doesn't look very good. After I get that flattened out, we'll do the same thing on the other side. If you look there, it kind of gets a, gets a radius in the edge. And sometimes you can leave that radius, but when you bend the handle, sometimes it'll fold that radius up and it, it doesn't look good then either. So I just, the best thing for me to do that I've found to do is just, is beat it flat. Now I'm gonna put it back in there. Now I've got that folded down. And you see the edge where I cut it, it's kind of, it's, it's not perfectly straight, but I didn't measure anything. This is just freehand. So when you fold it over, you're bending it over a straight edge, so it makes it straight. And if you don't look on the inside of the handle, you never know it. But this is something I'm kind of trying to do in a hurry because I'm actually cooking the gumbo while I'm making this. Once you pull that out, you do, do it just like you did on the other side. Get that to go past 90. I'm using something a little bit different here than the hammer. I know I got my hand in the way, but I found that sometimes it's easier to bend that past a 90 with the side of a wrench. And now take the hammer after you get it past the 90 and just be slow about, bend it a little bit and go slow down the length of it and then come back and finish folding it over. After you get the edges flattened out, you've got to go and when, when you use some used tin, it'll, it'll have some coating on it, like a picture on the, on the can. I think this one had a Santa Claus on it. And you need to take something sharp, like a good old American made case knife that my wife gave me. Actually, she gave me two of them. One was engraved for our anniversary and guess which one I lost. So anyway, I'm scraping that off so it'll be easier to solder to the can when we get ready to put it on the can. You just got to get it, get it kind of clean. It doesn't, it doesn't take a lot to get all that off because it's, it's kind of thin. It scratches off easy. And sometimes we'll leave, you know, what the soldering doesn't burn off and what you don't have to remove to make it solder right, we'll leave on there just because the way it looks sometimes. Now I'm going to use the handle of the hammer to put the bend in the handle for the mug. Now normally we'll, we'll try, sometimes it'll be flat on top and sometimes we'll make half a heart shape to mount on the side of the can. And you just gotta keep working it. Sometimes you'll put creases in it and you just gotta go back. And if the crease bothers you, you just gotta kinda, kinda straighten them out a little bit and flatten, you can flatten them out with a hammer and then rebend them. Nice thing about 10, if you make a mistake, you can bend it back out straight and then, then try again. Now, when you, when you try to fit the handle 
the end of the handle straight and the can of course is round. So on the bottom, I'll kind of bend, I'll bend a little tab on the bottom sometimes. Sometimes you just bend the corners to make it fit the bottom of the can better for to put on the can when you solder it. Now the top, I always try to solder the top to the to the edge, to the edge that had the lid in it that you that you cut you cut the lid out of when you use the cutter on it. Now I'm gonna mark that and kind of help me, I'm gonna mark the can and then I'll mark the top of the handle to show you how to cut the handle to make it fit the top of the can. Now the reason I'm doing this is because it, these cans have a little bit of a coating on them and you have to take that little bit of coating, I'll sand it off or get a Dremel and, and knock it off where you're planning on soldering. So that's what I'm doing now. Now you put that down there and you mark the you mark the circle on the top of the sometimes it's kind of hard to do you need another hand but I'm going to mark that and that'll show me where to cut it and how to fit it to the top of the can one thing I learned when I started doing the tin stuff is old tin smiths they use something called flux it makes the solder flow easier it makes it stick to whatever base metal you're putting it to well that flux, unbeknownst to me, is just pine rosin. It's that amber stuff that oozes out of pine trees. So don't buy any expensive flux if you're gonna, if you're gonna solder something like this. You just buy a pound of, of the same kind of rosin like, hell, violinists use on their bowstrings. It's about $16 a pound from Amazon. And here I mark that can and I'm taking that little bit of coating off that so the solder, solder stick to it good. Now, once you do that, you put some rosin on it and you do what they call tin it. You put, you put some solder, you get it hot and put some solder on it. And that makes it a lot easier to fit the handle on the side of the can. I try not to make my marks go away so I know where to put the handle. So when everything's hot and I'm trying to burn myself with the soldering iron, I've got something to line up on and I don't have to desolder it and move it and resolder it. Okay, now that little amber piece of, piece of rosin there, you put it right there on the tip of the soldering iron and let it drip where you're wanting to solder. Now, you're gonna see me make a mistake here in just a second. I didn't keep the soldering iron down on the can where I started long enough to get it good and hot to make the solder stick. So I'm gonna have to go back down there and sometimes you have to reapply the rosin because you burn it off but I'm using a 100% or 99.9% .9 tin solder, no, no lead on this. And actually, I, I kind of didn't like using the tin solder at first, but then I figured out the tin solder flows better than the lead solder, especially with the pine rosin. So what we're doing now, what I'm doing now is, is called tinning. I'm getting a layer of solder down there and I'm gonna put a layer of solder on the handle. And when I get ready to put it all up there, all I've got to do is put just a little more rosin on it and then put the handle right up there against the can and touch it with the soldering iron and it'll stick it in a spot. And once it sticks it, you can go back and do the rest of the soldering on it. Now, it didn't take as much heat on the can to tin the bottom because that's out in the middle where the can's real thin. That top is a thicker piece of steel. Okay, now I've got that I've got that good and tinned now where the bottom of the handle goes. Now that I've got the can tinned, it's time to tin the handle. I'm just gonna show you tinning the top of the handle because it just gets repetitive if I show you the bottom. That little rock that was on there, that's a piece of rosin. I just touched it with the, touched it with the soldering iron and melted it on there. You see how it's spread out. And when I went off out of the, out of the seam, I just got some some solder on the tip of the soldering iron. Go back over it and see that kind of, it just kind of flowed over there. Now, I put another little piece of rock of solder, I mean of rosin on there, put some solder on the iron and just touched it where they meet right there. And that rosin made that solder flow between the can and the top of the handle and it's stuck. 
it's not soldered completely because I have to go back and solder it, finish soldering the whole the whole area where they meet. But I'm gonna put another little rock of rock of rosin on there, and all I've got to do is clean the tip on a wet rag, get some more solder on there, and then touch it right where the where the handle and the can meet. And it just, you can just see where it just flowed out there. And I don't have to do very much more solder in there. Right here's the finished mug. All I've got to do now is scrape all the rosin off of it. It, it once it cools off, it just kind of scrapes off. You don't need to scrape the can, scrape the can up, just knock the rosin off of it and then wipe it. If you really want to go after it, you can get denatured alcohol and it makes it come off apparently. There's one more thing I did to this I didn't have on camera. That little loop right there, that's to hang that on the wall on a nail and it hangs the can upside down. I put that on all my cups because if you hang it from the handle, it hangs it right side up and there's no telling what'll be in there when you take it down to use it the next time. But the way that handle's on there, I've never had one come off and it's really strong. But you know, some people are scared to solder things and do this, but Man, just give it a try. Just try not to burn yourself. Wounds heal. Thanks for watching.